Now in our last video, there were a couple of things that we just weren't able to get around and pay attention to. In particular, there were two questions. The first being, why doesn't God simply fix things? I mean, if he is that caring friend who's always with us, why doesn't he just simply remove the problems that are causing us pain? And the second question is this, what if our going through pain, you know, with him by our side, is actually better for us than his merely fixing things? Well, my name's Charles. Grab yourself some coffee and let's talk about them. Now, as we get started, I want to let you know that the evil we're going to be talking about is that which is caused by our fellow human beings. You know, fellow fallen human beings, people just like you and I. Now, yes, there are other sources of pain and suffering, things we would consider to be evil things, right, such as natural disasters and whatnot. And yet, I find that the majority of our pain truly comes from the evil that is uh, directly attributable to or, you know, caused by other people. Because of that, I'm going to focus on that aspect of evil. We can talk about the other sources of pain and suffering later if you'd like. Simply talk to me in the comments section and we'll get that going underway. Now, um, for now, I do find that both of these questions seem to truly be answered in the story of God relating to human beings as that unfolds in the Bible, you know, beginning with Genesis and going straight through to the book of Revelation in the New Testament. See, in Genesis, you know, we're told that, uh, for instance, that God made man in his own image. Now, there are many, 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 many ideas as to what that truly involves, and I'm not going to go into any of that because that is not the topic of this video. However, I do mention it because it does mark the starting point for the relationship between God and people. You know, he, it shows that when he made us, he gave us a very special capacity to be in relationship with him. See, he created us to love. Then it goes on, the Bible does, after the fall, and, well, I find that it mainly deals with God pursuing us in order to get this relationship reestablished. It is full of his reaching out to us, of his encouraging us, of his providing the way back that we may come home once again. See, he absolutely proof positive wants this relationship. That is the general message of the whole Bible. Now, before leaving the book of Genesis, though, I do want to share something that I have found to be very subtle and yet a very profound indication of God's desire for this relationship. See, immediately after the fall, God does something amazing. He comes walking through the garden in the cool of the day. He is coming to spend time with Adam and Eve. Now, Adam and Eve do hide on this occasion, but it is not because of surprise that God showed up, you know. It is not because of a shock that God has shown up. You know, this is not something new that's never happened before. Indeed, the way everything is worded, it suggests to me that this was a very common occurrence. It happened all the time. It was part of their relationship. See, this walk in the garden, you know, to get to spend time with Adam and Eve, reveals the importance God places on love and relationship as he was all in. He was spending the time. He was investing the energy. He was all about it. Now, moving right along into the New Testament. Now, to keep this video of reasonable length, I'm only going to mention a couple of the New Testament passages which we can also find this, you know, in which we can also find this. The first being when Jesus says that if we remain in him and in his love, his joy will be in us. And because of this, our joy will be made complete. And then the passage in which he says that he has come and provides a peace which surpasses our understanding. We just won't be able to comprehend how it happens. See, he wants to relate to us and he wants to bring us complete joy and unfathomable peace. Now that is the story. Basic, kind of boiled down, but that's 
the story of God relating to human beings. Now, you might be saying with all this, okay, you know, that's all well and good and maybe even slightly interesting, but what does that have to do with answering our question? Here's the thing, as God wants us to love him, he had to give us that ability to love. Love has to be chosen, which means out of necessity that it can be rejected. See, that is the great paradox of being a human being. We can be the most loving creatures on the face of this planet, and we can be the most self-centered, non-caring creatures on this planet planted planet. It's our choice. Now, when it came to this, I used to say that this was the great risk that God took in making us in the first place. You know, that he risked that some of us would indeed choose to not love him, that we would choose to put ourselves first and our self-interests before him and anyone else. But I no longer think that this was a risk because God being God, he already knew that people would choose to reject love and so to reject him. See, it was no gamble. It was no risk. For God, it was an absolute certainty. See, wrap your head around this. This is really profound. Jesus knew this even as he first breathed life into Adam. He knew as he was creating us, that he would have to come and die on the cross. Are you beginning now to catch a glimpse of just how much value God places on us and our ability to love? Now, since he made us, while having the knowledge that there would always be those who rejected him, and since he so greatly values our love, how could he then do anything that would take away our ability to love him? Yes, there is much evil that comes from the selfish choice to not love. You know, whether we're talking about Adam and Eve's desire to be like God, or any modern day case, you know, such as um, adultery or murder or oppression, or any wrong you care to mention, really. See, all of them start with the focus on the self. And evil is very much like a virus. Once it arrives, it grows, it spreads out, becomes chaotic, and lashes out at whoever and wherever it can. There is no rhyme or reason to it. And it is precisely our ability to love that even makes that possible. See, for God then to just fix things to stop all the evil and all the pain, which technically he could do, would be for him to have to take his gift of the choice to love away as well. He would stop the pain, but he would also then be prevent preventing us from being able to love and build trust and build a relationship with him. And as we have seen, he values this too much to ever do that. See, this is why he cannot fix everything. So, as to the next question of how is it better for us to be going through the pain as long as he is with us by our side? How is that better than his merely fixing things? Well, with him by our side, he can then show us how to love and how to thrive in the very middle of our pain and with him dwelling in us. He will give us complete joy and bring a peace we can't understand. And as he does that, he is actually helping us to thrive. I mean, we can be hard pressed, but not crushed. We can then be perplexed, but not despairing, pursued, but not forsaken. We can be struck down, but we will not be destroyed. See, if he were to merely fix things and so take back his gift of love, we would never be able to be this strong. 
we would truly be less than a human being. See, it is, but by, by being with us, he helps us be strong and resilient, and he is bringing us back home. Now, here's a mind bender for you. See, I have mentioned this elsewhere, but it's, it's, it's worth a repeat. What if when Jesus came to restore our relationship with God, well, he was also transforming us into those who can actively engage with him in the eradication of evil? What if in helping us to love once again, he is actually involving us in his plan for ending evil here on earth? See, we are the ones created to care for this world, we human beings. And yet we human beings brought evil into it. And now, what if God is using our restoration to help restore the rest of his world? Perhaps this is a part of the abundant life that Jesus came to give. And what an intriguing thought that is, that this abundance that Jesus gives is partly found in helping rid the world of evil through truly loving one another. See, this is the great responsibility of the gift of the choice to love. Well, there you go. There you have it, and there it is. You now know the reason why God simply can't fix things. He would be destroying our ability to love him and anyone else. And he does stand with us and help us thrive and grow in him even as we are caught in the exact middle of adversity. And two, we, okay, we're becoming aware that perhaps we are now becoming those that he is entrusting to be a part of his ending this evil. So, love simply, love wisely, and love well. And learn from God how to thrive in the middle of everything that's happening. And learn to take your position in eradicating the evil as you grow in your love for him and your neighbor. This kind of gives a whole new insight into being a Christian soldier, does it not? See, not being one who fights, let's forget that, but in being one who loves in the very face of evil. How profound is that? Well, tell me what you think in the comment section below. And please, if you like this video, share it with a friend for good coffee and good conversation loves good company. Also, please check that like and the subscribe buttons and then make sure to click that, click that little gray bell icon that shows up and tell YouTube that you want to be notified each and every single time a conversation is posted. And in the description box, I will post all the Bible verses that I referenced, you know, for anyone who's interested, and I will post them in the, in the order that I referenced them. Well, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll catch up with you then.